Hi, and welcome to this video about Tails and Tor. First, let's talk about Tails, or the Amnesiac Incognito Live System. Tails is a Linux distribution designed to give the user complete anonymity online. It is called Amnesiac because it simply forgets everything that happens between each session. The Tails operating system is going to run solely on the RAM memory. It is not going to write anything on disk, whether it's the local disk or the USB thumb drive from which it's running. It is going to route all of its traffic through the Tor network, again guaranteeing a high level of anonymity. At its core, it's designed to allow users to get information and share information online in the most secure and anonymous way possible. To do that, it comes pre-built with many different types of applications, features, and software. Let's review some of them now. First, we have Veracrypt. Veracrypt is designed to encrypt and decrypt information. MetaCleaner, that will remove digital fingerprint from a certain file, such as the author, the location, the date the file was created, and anything else that might give away who made that file and when. It has Electrum, which is a Bitcoin wallet. It uses OnionShare to securely share files over the internet. Mozilla Thunderbird, which is an open source email client. And GNU PG, meant to encrypt and digitally sign emails. All of these applications, as well as all the other applications on Tails, are free and open source. This means that the user or the community can look at the source code and make sure that no one has put any backdoors, golden keys, or anything else in there that could compromise the user's privacy or anonymity. We're going to focus on one specific application in Tails, which is of course Tor, the Onion Router. Tor is not meant solely for malicious activities. In fact, in most countries, Tor is legal. But it is important to mention it doesn't mean that everything you find online while using Tor is legal. But again, Tor on its own in most countries is legal to use. So let's talk a little bit about Tor. First, on our side, we'll be running the Tails OS, and then we'll open a browser called the Tor browser. The Tor browser is really just a version of the Mozilla Firefox. Some of the features were removed and others were added to allow this communication over the Tor network. The Tor network is really what makes the magic. Let's see what that looks like. On one side we have our user, and on the other we have a website. If our user wants to speak to this site directly, there's going to be some issues regarding privacy and anonymity. Also the site itself can decide that it only accepts traffic through the Tor network. Either way, in our case, we are going to use the Tor network. This means that we're going to run our traffic through three different servers of different volunteers that run Tor. In fact, you can find a list of all these servers and all these volunteers online. In our example, we'll use server A, B, and C. Server A will be what we call the guard node, and server C will be the exit node. We will communicate with all three servers, and using a three-way handshake, we're going to establish a key pair with each one. This is the exact same process that happens with any other server using SSL TLS. Only difference here is that we're doing it with three different servers instead of just one. Once we have established these three connections, we're going to take our packet. We're going to encrypt it with three different layers, A, B, and C. A can only be decrypted by the first server, B can only be decrypted by the second server, and C only by the third server. Underneath these three separate layers of encryption, we'll have our message. Now it's time to send our message through the Tor network. So this will be our packet, and our message is right here. Now remember, each layer of the onion represents a layer of encryption. So first we're going to send it to server A. Server A can only decrypt the first layer of encryption. Once it peels that back, it can only see that the next layer is encrypted and is meant for server B. It knows where the packet came from, and it knows where the packet is going in the next hop, but it doesn't know its final destination. 
Our next stop is server B. Again, server B can only decrypt that second layer. It knows that the packet came from A, but it has no idea what's the origin and it has no idea what's the final destination. All it can see at this point is that it needs to send it to server C. Then our packet will get to server C. Server C will peel back the last layer of encryption. Now again, server C can tell that this packet came from B, but it has no idea that B got it from A and that A got it from the user. However, C can see the actual message, which includes the final destination of this packet, which is of course our website. At this point, the website doesn't know where that traffic came from. It only know that it got it from C. It doesn't know about B, it doesn't know about A, and it definitely doesn't know about the user. Now, of course, this is all in theory. In a real life scenario, it's possible that the user made some misconfigurations, that there is some vulnerability somewhere in this chain that is being abused by an attacker, or that simply one of these servers were compromised. But this system on its own, if done properly, will guarantee a high level of anonymity. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and run Tails. Now in a real world scenario, Tails is going to run from a thumb drive. It is only going to use RAM and it's not going to touch the disk at all. However, I'm running this from a virtual machine, so my scenario is a little different since we're just running a demo here. Usually it takes Tails about 10 to 15 seconds, all the way up to a minute or two to boot up, depending of course on the speed of the RAM. I'm going to skip this forward in the interest of time. And here we go. We have the welcome to Tails and it's asking me to select language and format since again, this is a completely new environment. Every time you boot up, it's a completely new environment. So it's asking for a language, keyboard, formats, etc. I'm just going to leave everything at default. It's also asking me if I want to create persistent storage. Now remember again, Everything is gone the second we dismount and power off Tails. Nothing gets saved, definitely not on disk, but also not on the USB flash drive that we're using to run Tails. So if you want to save any files and use them again later, you will need to create persistent storage by of course toggling this button. I'm not going to do it in our case, so I'm just going to go ahead and start Tails. Now it's giving me this warning here that I'm using a non-free virtual machine. That is absolutely true, absolutely the case. I understand the warning. Again, since this is a demo, I'm just going to ignore this warning and I'm going to connect to Tor. Now it's going to ask me if I want to configure a Tor bridge. Now a Tor bridge is really a proxy that will connect you to the Tor network. Now, since Tor is really just a chain of proxies, you might be wondering, why do I want this bridge? Well, as we explained before, your ISP can definitely see that you're connecting to the Tor network. Only once you're on the Tor network do you get that certain degree of anonymity. In some countries, you're not even allowed to connect to the Tor network. So in that situation, certain people might decide to create a Tor bridge, a proxy that is not associated with the Tor network. That proxy can later connect them to the Tor network directly. Now again, I don't recommend that you do this. If Tor is illegal where you are, please don't do this. Um, and I'm definitely not going to be needing this since Tor is legal where I am. So I'm going to completely skip this option and I'm just going to connect directly to Tor. And that's it. I'm successfully connected to Tor. Now this means that everything that I do on this machine that is reaching out to the World Wide Web is going to run through the Tor network, not just browsing, emails or anything else, anything that needs to go on the internet will be routed through Tor. I can click here and we can view the Tor circuits. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to start up the Tor browser. And as I said before, this really is just Mozilla Firefox with some changes. It looks and feels like Mozilla Firefox. Go to the settings. You can see a lot of a very familiar settings here with some features that we can enable and disable. 
very similar to the original Mozilla Firefox. The first website that we're going to go to will be tails.net since we can perform this tour check here. So I'm going to click on that and it will verify for us that we are in fact connected to the Tor network. So it says here, congratulations, this browser is configured to use Tor. If I click here, I can look at the Onion circuit that I'm using right now. So it says here, this browser, of course, this is our current client machine. We have here three different hops. So this will be our guard, that server A that we saw in the example, server B and C, and this will be our website, so torproject.org, which is, of course, the site that we're using right now. I'm going to blur out some of these IP addresses here, but this really is our Tor circuit, and all we need to know is really this is just the kind of the five different points that we discussed earlier in the presentation. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to amia.fi. AMIA is a search engine that is designed to work within the Tor network. It has this clear web website, but as you can see here, this says onion available. So I'm just going to click on the dot onion available and it's going to connect me to the dot onion version of AMIA. And from here I can start to run dark web searches. Now, again, this video is not about the dark web itself. We just wanted to discuss some of the technicalities of how Tor actually works. And this is just a quick demo. So we're not going to start typing things away here. I'm just going to close the browser at this point. We might do another video on how to surf the dark web or what is on the dark web, but it's not our topic for today. So I'm just going to close this out. Let's look at some of the applications that Tails has to offer. So we covered some of them in the presentation. We can take a quick look here and see what we have. So we have KeePass for storing passwords, metadata cleaner that we've mentioned earlier. You can even find some open source graphic software on here. Under internet, of course, we have the Tor browser. We have Thunderbird to send emails. We have the Onion Share to send files. Uh, we also have the Electrum Bitcoin wallet here. Under Office, we have the LibreOffice. So basically everything you need, if you are running this in a remote location and you need to be able to communicate securely, make sure that no one is eavesdropping on your traffic. There is no third party applications here that kind of phone home. There is no real way to actually go on the web without going through the Tor network. So this really has all these tools that will allow you to communicate with the world using only open source software and the Tor network, which again, will guarantee some degree of anonymity. And once I'm going to power this off, it's going to completely wipe out the RAM and forget everything that happened in the session. So I'm going to click on power off and it's going to wipe the RAM and shut off the machine. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to also check the bell icon to make sure you get notifications about new videos just as they come out.